Ang ganda ng pasok ni Vivo IQ00 this year. And this one is the Neo 9 ni Vivo. This is a budget gaming phone that is priced at around a little bit above 20,000 pesos. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 ang kanyang processor. LPDDR5X ang kanyang RAM. UFS 4.0 ang kanyang storage. LTPO AMOLED ang kanyang display. 144Hz ang kanyang screen refresh rate. 120W ang kanyang fast charging. And best of all, sobrang ganda ng kanyang design. Naintriga ka na? Keep watching! And so, sinabi ko sa inyo kanina sa intro, ang ganda ng kanyang display. And true enough, this is the display ng Vivo IQ00 na Neo 9. If only taga San Beda ka, this color is simply perfect for you. Hi Pinoy Tech Dad. I hope next time meron na siyang color na panglasan. Now, looking ang kanyang tahi dito sa gitna, yung separation between the red and the white, sobrang ganda, sobrang seamless. Pag hinawakan mo, halos parang wala ka masyadong nasasalat. It's not just any faux leather finish. Medyo premium leather or leatherette dito ang nilagay ni Vivo IQ00. Making it feel a lot more premium than yung mga other phones na nahawakan ko. Hindi ako nag-hype pa, pero talagang masarap talaga hawakan siya. And ang kanyang camera module dito is hindi dalong bilog, pero semi-bilog. And ang kanyang side frames is made out of plastic, and pero maganda ang kanyang pagka matte finish ng pula. Sa ibabaw, meron pa siyang IR blaster. Lahat halos nakikiuso kay Xiaomi having a IR blaster. And dito makita mo ang logo na Neo. Probably hindi mo masyado papansin, no? Kasi medyo faded. But dito, kita nyo ang chrome finish na emblem ng IQ00. Now, ang kanyang punch hole is not the smallest I've seen. Pero na-offset naman siya ng kanyang manipis na bezels. Now, one of the things na gusto ko dito sa kanya is sobrang ganda ng kanyang UI. Itong UI niya, no, it's called the Origin na UI 4.0. It's running Android 14. And what I like dito sa kanya is medyo refreshing siya. Unlike yung mga ibang UI na halos lahat nagkukopyahan kay iPhone, you don't need to copy kay iPhone para medyo mas angat ka, mas social. Itong Origin UI is a class of its own. Sarap niyang gamitin. Just a little bit of learning curve but you'll get the hang of it. And I like dito sa kanya is nandito ang kanyang clock and nasa kabila lahat ang kanyang mga icons. Looks refreshing. Now, since this phone is a China ROM phone, Hindi siya naka-region lock, no? So, I tried Globe and Smart SIM dito and it's working perfectly. Walang problema, nakasagap na siya ng 5G. And the next question is, paano install lang to na Google Play Store? Nakahanap ako ng shortcut. All you need to do is go dito sa VApp Store. Click nyo lang to. Type in Google Play dito sa ibabaw sa kanyang search bar. Pag search mo, makita mo ang kanyang first icon is a Google Play Store. Update it and you're done. Probably ito, hindi sinasabi sa mga ibang tech reviewers. Normally, sabi nila, China ROM pangit yan, walang Google Play Store. But hindi nila alam, all you need to do is just simply wake it up. Except siguro kay Huawei dahil sa US ban, wala siyang Google Play Store. But all of the other China ROM phones na nahawakan ko, hindi mo siya makikita na install, but rather update ang kanyang icon na makikita mo. Dito nilang malalaman kay Gadget Psychic ang mga honest na information like this one. Now, since sinabi ko this phone is being powered by a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, bakit nang ginagay ng Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, no? Kasi itong chip na ito is very much optimized already. Unlike si Gen 3, I'm still experiencing yung pag-iinit ng mga phone, no? Sobrang init ni Gen 3. I think kailangan pa nila optimize further. This one was able to give me a 1.54 million score dito sa Antutu benchmark. And if you break it down, this is the score na dapat mo makuha. Nakakuha naman siya ng 3,700 na loop score point and stability na is 91%. Checking Geekbench, this is the score sa kanyang CPU bench. And this is the score sa kanyang GPU bench. Looking at the thermal throttling test, very much efficient naman siya. Kita mo all green and nag-throttle siya to 91% ng kanyang maximum performance. And what's nice dito, it simply indicates that this phone can give you a good gaming experience. Now, ang kanyang screen is a 6.78 inch na LTPO AMOLED display with 144Hz subscreen refresh rate, HDR10 Plus ang kanyang support, and 1,400 nits ang kanyang maximum brightness. 
ang kanyang screen to body ratio is at 90% which I think ah, medyo nabawasan lang siya kasi ma medyo malaki ang kanyang punch hole now if you're scrolling dito on your favorite social media sobrang smooth niya dahil meron siyang 144 sa screen refresh rate scrolling on uh, mga shorts mga reels and probably sa social media sa Facebook and sa TikTok you would really feel yung smoothness ng ganap every single swipe. And if you're watching mga videos dito on YouTube and on Netflix, don't worry, meron siyang level 1 na Wi-Fi security level, so pwede ka manood na HD dito. Expect a premium display dito sa phone na ito dahil maganda ang display panel na ginamit ni Vivo dito. Punchy and sharp ang mga colors. No, ang kanyang loudspeaker dito is isa sa ilalim and isa pa dito sa earpiece. Subukan lang natin mag-play ng isang song. Let's see how loud. Na wiggle, 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 wiggle lang ka ng song. It's really quite loud, pero hindi siya sobrang loud na na-experience ko on other gaming phones. But it's quite decent enough ang kanyang loudspeaker. Now, the phone nito has a 120 watts na flash charge support. Charging from 0 to 100 takes roughly mga 20 minutes to complete the full charging cycle. And if you ask me kung gaano kakuna itong phone na ito, it can last me more than a day if you're using it normally. But if you're pushing this phone to the max sa kanyang gaming performance, maybe less than half a day, kailangan mo na mag-charge. Now, speaking of gaming, alam na natin si 8 Gen 2 kaya niya mag-perform. Walang question, no question asked about that. And one of the things na gusto kong pakita sa inyo is yung kanyang ultra game mode dito sa loob ng kanyang setting. So, pagpasok mo ng ultra game mode, makita mo there's mga game sidebar, ultra game mode, pwede mo i-turn on. Now, for me, one of the highlights dito is ang kanyang 4D game vibration. So far, ah, support na dito sa mga in-install ko si Call of Duty Mobile and si Genshin Impact. So, while I'm playing these two games, Sobrang sarap ang pakiramdam, no? So, parang medyo immersive siya to the way na pag may nababaril ka mga kalaban, pag nagbabaril ka, softer ang kanyang vibration. Pero kung may napatay kang kalaban, magpa-vibrate siya na isang biglang, isang, isang ano, parang to let you know na patay na yung kalaban. Then, same goes kay Genshin Impact. Kung nasa battle ka na, no? Na, ano, nalabas mong mga data mo, nag action ka na, feel mo slight vibration pero once na meron kang napatay na kalaban magpa-vibrate siya na mas malakas signaling na patay na yung kalaban meron din siyang screen light effect dito which only works kay Arena Valor uh, it lets you know yung ilaw no once na nagkaroon ka ng triple kill quadra kill though I don't play that game so hindi ko siya na-testing so I would suggest I turn on ito sa network stability settings din yo. and I would suggest I turn on nyo rin ito sa frame rate priority sa inyong mga games Probably the only thing na medyo missing dito sa kanya is wala siyang bypass charging. Now, there are some questions na gusto ko lang sagutin sa aking unboxing and first impression. Asking if this one is a full English. Once na sinchange ko ang language to English, yes, it's a full English na language. So, pagpasok ko na settings, if you scroll it down, lahat naman to naka-English. Wala naman ako nabasang Chinese dito na character. Except that there are some Chinese bloatwares dito sa labas na kailangan nilang ibura manually. Yun lang. Tatlong games ang nilaro ko dito, si Call of Duty Mobile, si Farlight 84, and si Genshin Impact. Si Call of Duty Mobile, I would say sobrang immersive, lalo na dinagdagan ng 4D na experience dito sa kanya. Playing that game is really nice and fun kasi yung kanyang uh, vibration, especially during gameplay, is really something na na-experience ko dito sa kanya. Probably, I have yet to experience sa ibang phone. Correct me if I'm wrong, ah, kasi dito ko pa lang siya na turn on or maybe na-experience. Haven't really tried it on other units yet, but it's really something fun na to let you know na a heavy vibrate means napatayin mo na kalaban and a light vibrate means nagbabaril ka. And the touch response dito sa kanya is definitely fast kasi on every single touch ko dito, wala naman na naging problema and hindi naman naglalag ang Call of Duty Mobile pagdating sa mga Battle Royals. Same goes kay Farlight 84. The gameplay, sinagad-sagad natin ang kanyang gaming graphics. Tinurn on natin ang Game Monster mode niya sa sidebar na no, pag-swipe in natin. And the experience is definitely fun. Naglaro tayo halos tatlong uh, Battle Royal match dito sa kanya. And nung nag, ano na, towards the end of the game, medyo marami kami nagkumpulan sa isang certain point nagbabari lang kami, no? Wala naman na feel na frame drops dito sa kanya. And okay na okay naman ka na gameplay. And pagdating naman sa Genshin Impact, this one also supports yung kanyang 4D na game experience. It's also nice and really fun. 
And the gameplay was really cool kasi dahil sa kanyang added na immersive experience dito sa kanya. But one thing na napansin ko sa Genshin Impact, if you put it to the maximum, lahat ng graphical settings na pwede mo isalpak dito sa kanya. Ito phone na ito, reach at around mga 50 to 51 degrees Celsius, uh, somewhere near the camera bump. And yun ang sinabi sa akin ng aking Malsi na thermal scanner. A good gaming cooler like Sigfly DG na B6 would definitely cool this down faster. Now, this is not only just a gaming phone. Ang kanyang camera dito sa phone na ito, nung initial tinesting ko siya, masasabi ko sa ito, it really looks good. And this one has a 50MP na main camera sensor with OIS, 8MP na ultra wide lens. This one can shoot up to 8K and 30fps. Ang kanyang selfie camera is just simply a 16MP shooter which can only shoot you up to 1080p and 30fps. From what I know, ang kanyang main camera sensor is a Sony IMX na 920. So I had really high expectation dito sa kanyang camera. Tinan natin sa mga samples. So i-analyze natin right now ang mga camera shots na kuha natin. No? Let's start off with outdoor shot. And pansin nyo, no? itong rock na ito, it looks just like a normal rock no? na nandiyan sa tabi-tabi. But if you zoom it in, you'll see all of the details na na-capture dito. Pati mga vines dito na nakakapit sa kanya. No? Ang daming details na makikita mo dito once you zoom it in. Now, I'm pretty much amazed dito sa mga shots na nakuha ko dito sa kanya using yung kanyang ultra-wide lens. This is how it looks like. And this is a normal shot. Pagdating sa two-time zoom, this is how it looks like. Papansin mo, no? yung mga building... Well, pag zoom in mo, makita mo, there's a lot of details pa rin na pre-preserve. And what's nice dito sa kanya is ang bilis niya mag-focus. Now, if pinansin mo mabuti ang yung tatlong sky niya dito, no? This one is a little bit bluish gray, yung kanya ultra-wide. Then, a little bit lighter blue, para medyo may pagka-baby blue dito sa normal lens. And medyo may pagka-grayish blue dito sa kanyang uh, two-time zoom lens. So, medyo ibang colors ng pinaproduce sa kanyang sensors. Now, probably this is one of my favorite shot dito, uh, taking this bokeh shot dito sa halaman na ito. You'll see, no, ang ganda ng pagka-cut niya dito. Hindi siya nag-soften dito sa mga halaman. Then, at the same time, yung mga background niya, ang ganda ng kanyang pagka-blur. Na ulitin lang natin ang kanyang ultra-wide lens. This is how it looks like. This is a one-time zoom lens and this is a two-time zoom lens. Now, you see a lot of details pa rin preserved after zooming it for two times. Now, bringing this one indoors, you'd see na I did take some food shot dito. And ang ganda ng mga food na nakuha ko dito, no? It looks really yummy. Uh, lalo tong, ano, no? Uh, mga crackers, mga sausages, mga cheese. It looks really yummy. And pati ito mga steak and ribs and mga potatoes. Pati ito mga puto, ito mga dessert na nakuha natin, no? Dalaga mafe-feel mo, ma magugutom ka pag once nakakita mga food na ito. And taking on some mga uh, Christmas decor shot, this is really looking nice, no? Especially itong shot na ito, kinose up ko siya. But this is a, just a one-time zoom. And pag zoom in mo, you see really a lot of details, even though na medyo low light na dito. Eh, ang ganda pa rin ng pagka-reproduce ng photo na ito. And taking in some more shots, na naalil lang tayo dito sa kanyang train. And nung lumabas tayo, nakita ko itong puto. Na ito. Just take a quick shot lang sa kanya Ang bilis mong focus to And pag zoom in mo Kita mo ang ganda ng pagka-preserve ng kanyang mga details Now checking some apparel shot Pag zoom in mo dito sa kanyang three stripes so Dito sa Adidas Kitang-kita mo pa rin ang kanyang mga details Now taking on some night shot This is how it looks like pag gabi Still very clear using its night mode Now using its front-facing camera This is how it looks like on outdoors E makita mo nag-smoothin ang aking muka Thanks to yung beautification dito kahit naka-off Sabi nga ni Vivo Hindi sila naniniwala sa pangapang now, some more outdoor shot looks like this. And taking in some indoor shot, uh, katawi ko ng Christmas tree, this is how it look like. So right now, tingnan na natin ang kanang quality pagdating sa video. Now, looking at this shot, habang naglalakad, you'll see some focus hunting dito sa kanya. And plus, yung mga flickers sa mga ilaw, hindi talaga natin may iwasan yan. No? Dahil iba ang hertz ng recording natin and iba ang hertz ng mga ilaw. So you'll really see some flickering along the way. Pati itong shot na ito, no? akala mo siguro nagpo-focus hunt siya. Well, there's a mild focus hunting but more of parang flickering ang makikita mo dito sa Christmas tree. But in actual, hindi naman siya nagpo-flicker. Now, looking on this one, on outdoors, pa naglalakad ka, it looks quite smooth naman. And taking this on 4K and 60fps, okay na okay naman tong shot na ito, itong video na ito. Except that there are times na uh, mapapansin mo, there is a very slight na focus hunting happening dito sa kanyang camera. 
Now, using the front-facing camera, makita mo a little bit shaky. Hindi super clear ang kanang camera. There's a little bit of parang pagka-haziness. I'm not quite sure kung effect siya ng uh, surrounding or just the camera. And even sa indoors, mapapansin mo, it's not super duper clear. So guys, kung sinabi ko so sa inyo, this is priced at a little bit above 20,000 pesos. Would you buy it? Would I recommend this phone? Definitely a yes dahil ang lakas ng kanang processor, ganda ng kanang camera. This phone can definitely game and sobrang ganda ng kanyang likod. Ilang beses ko inulit dito sa inyo na sobrang sarap hawakan niya. And masasabi ko siya, it's more premium na ng mga sub 10,000 and 15,000 pesos na faux leather finish. This one is really different. Mafe-feel mo talaga once na nahawakan mo siya. And kung naniwala kayo sa akin and you want to purchase this phone, you can buy this from Shandy Masangkay or from the links that I'll be posting on the description box below. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to like and share it to your friends. And a subscription to this channel would definitely be awesome. I'll see you in the next one. And so, I'm Parasir Richmond and you're watching Gadget Psychic. Watch out! Like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. For one of my latest uploads, click the dito. And for one of my popular uploads, click here.